Good morning. It's uh, well, actually now it's noon. But we woke up this morning. How I woke up and uh, decided to go to Moab, and then I woke her up, and so now we are arriving here to Moab, Utah. We are gonna take the Lexus off road. Uh, I've gone to like some sand dunes and some mild things with this car, but it can do a lot because the Lexus GX is, well, a Land Cruiser underneath the Land Cruiser Prado, and you know, I've got a lot of center diff, low and high range differential, 4.7 liter V8, and you know, I think this will do quite well off-road, and I have all-terrain tires on it, some knobby boys, a little bit oversized, and um, the roof rack also adds uh, an extra inch of ground clearance, you could say. Um, but subtracts five miles per gallon. <laughs> and let's see how it goes. It's gonna be a short trip. We're going there, we're staying a couple hours, and we're coming right back to Salt Lake. So this is a little detour from our normally scheduled programming of the Europe vlogs and the tech reviews. So let's go have some fun. So now, going into Canyonlands and we're going to do the Schaefer's Trail, um, Schaefer's Road is a road, it is pretty much a dirt road, but it's difficult and it has some switchbacks, and, but the cool thing is you're right along the Colorado River, so we're going to go there now. So the Schaefer Trail is actually at the mouth of a salt, uh, I believe, uh, farm. And so you actually drive past a uh, loading plant where they have trains and such. So you'll take the asphalt road all the way to the end. Then it just becomes a dirt road. There's a place to load and unload boats in case you want to go into the Colorado River. And you also pass by a lot of campgrounds. And what's really cool is as you're driving along the Colorado River, you'll see a bunch of people actually climbing the walls along the side of the river. It's incredible to see, and I bet it's even more incredible to do. Here you see some of the articulation of a stock Lexus GX 470 2007 model year. All I've done to this car is added uh, all-terrain tires uh, as far as performance modifications. So it is bone stock. Um, they are 275, 75R17s, so they're just a bit bigger than the stock wheels, but let's get back to the vlog. All right, we're on the trail, and uh, we're already a little bit dirty, and there's a cool rock. And uh, it's nice, actually, coming up, there was a couple moderately difficult rocks that come over, nothing, like nothing that challenged the car, but it was cool just to see. Uh, well, we'll keep it, keep it going, but it's doing amazing. It's no problem at all. So here you can kind of see those salt farms and really the views are incredible. I've been to Mount Moab many times, but I actually hadn't taken my drone yet. And so to be able to get these amazing views, uh, I kind of tried to pull off a little of a, a GTA moment here following this Jeep, but the camera quality on my DJI Mavic Mini did not uh, capture the amazing scenes found here in Moab, Utah. What's beautiful is that you have Arches National Park and you have Canyonlands National Park and then you have some state parks uh, sprinkled around it such as Dead Horse Point uh, State Park and while you're driving on this trail you're actually not in Canyonlands just yet. Once you get to the end uh, is when you arrive pretty near the visitor center actually and so that is when if anything, you would need to show your National Parks Pass or pay the, uh, the daily usage of, of the park. And right here uh, that you're seeing on the screen is somewhat at the beginning of the trail. I will say, if you look it up on something, something like all trails, it'll say, oh, you know, Schaefer Trail, 45 minutes. It is not 45 minutes. Uh, definitely plan for about three hours. If you want to stop, take pictures, kind of enjoy the views. And here we just did a little bit of fun um, side quests, you could say. I really wanted to push this vehicle a little bit more. 
as the forerunner that we have i have pushed a lot more but this car is actually not taken off road much so i want to see if we clear this right here just barely like two inches or so coming over the crest but the uh the wide angle does not uh really capture what it's actually like in person a little bit more articulation here and then yeah don't worry about my brakes i know i gotta change them <laughs> but you'll see us go up the hill now. And it's a lot steeper than it looks on the video. So just take my word for it. It was also all loose sand, which made it more difficult actually, but I kept it in low range, center, lick, uh, center diff locked. And I actually tried not to use too much gas. I think I only got up to two or 3000 RPM max. And it did amazingly well. The grip was fantastic. And the only scary part, I guess, was coming back down because I had to turn right there at the top. And of course, again, the camera does not show the angle of the hill very well, but at the top, it was quite steep. That was terrifying for me to watch, but I'm happy he did it. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. And um, well, making that turn right there was, eh, it was a little stressful, but then once you get it aimed straight down, it did amazing. I actually turned on the downhill assist control, but it never engaged because I was going quite slow. Uh, the sand really helped to slow down the vehicle, but it just cruised down. It was no problem at all. Here you can see it. Too easy. <laughs> yeah, it's too good, like I said. And the views are immaculate. Bye. Hello. Look at this. We thought we almost ran out of gas. <laughs> and it was really bad. But I think we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. I thought those rocks were buffalo. <laughs> I stopped. So as we watch this beautiful footage of, again, the trail, there was also a buddy over there that had a Lexus GX470 as well, but with heavy modifications, massive tires, about, I would say, 37 inch tires, full Fox uh, suspension kit, um, front and rear, definitely switched out the airbags for coilovers, but in any case, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Moab, and if you're going to go visit, things that you should expect, uh, where is Moab, and maybe th some things you should do. Since I've been there so many times, I feel like I, I could give uh, my opinion on it. Now, Moab from Salt Lake City, Utah is about three and a half, four hours away. Uh, you might make it there on one tank of gas, or you might not. Uh, so definitely keep that in mind. It's a beautiful place. It's a small town. Uh, Moab itself is very much a tourist town as far as uh, cities go. So you must know that there's not much of a nightlife. There's not a ton of places to eat, but there are some good ones there. Now, if you're gonna stay, just get an Airbnb if you want something nice. There's also a Hilton Hotel. It's a Hoodoo Collection, uh, Curio Collection. The Hoodoo Hotel Curio Collection by Hilton. Sorry. <laughs> that one is very fancy. I really like that one. I've stayed there. I've also stayed in Airbnbs and I've also camped. I think camping is the best experience. You get to see the amazing, amazing stars at night, especially since you're so far away from any cities. Now, if you want to do hiking, I highly suggest you go to Arches. It's beautiful. There's so many different hikes, so many different arches to visit. It's not just Delicate Arch, which you'll see later, but many others. And definitely go on the shoulder seasons, like right now in October, early November, or in, uh, in March or in April. Although you might think oh, it might be too, too cold, uh, it's perfect. Yeah, when you're hiking, you don't want it to be too hot like it is in the summer. There's less people. It's amazing. Now, if you go a little bit earlier later, 
you might actually run into a lot of people because they also know not to go in the summer or the winter. But I've been in every season and I think the worst time to go is the summer because it's so hot and there's so many people. Um, and don't go too close to the summer on either end because there will also be a lot of people. Uh, other things to note, if you love going off-roading, of course, you know Moab and you know it's the mecca of off-roading. And there is a park where, you know, you might see videos of Hell's Revenge or the uh, Fins and Things Trail. Now, what you're seeing here on screen is Schaefer Trail, but it's also part of the White Room Trail, which is 108 miles. And for some people, it takes about three days to complete. It's beautiful. You go along the Colorado River at some point. But for Hell's Revenge and Fins and Things, those are actually part of a private park. Uh, which you'll have to pay separately for but you can also camp in there and that's what I've done when I've gone to do the those trails They are difficult uh, You know you you will get some uh, Some trail scrapes and uh, you will get a few bumps and bruises on your car if you do those and you haven't made any modifications I've taken my 4 there 1997 Toyota 4 Runner limited with the locking rear differential locking rear differential hugely important uh, I did have all-terrain tires, but that is the extent of the modifications again on that one. And so Hell's Revenge was quite difficult, and we eventually turned back. Fins and things, I did do that, and that one was very tough. Uh, definitely have spotters or friends in other vehicles to go with you. You do not want to do that alone. Uh, as well as how hot and cold does it get in the summer, it gets quite warm. It will reach the hundreds, and in the winter, at night, you'll be, you'll be under zero, so definitely keep that in mind. It is a desert, so it, during the day it might be a wonderful temperature, but then at night it gets quite cold, so if you're camping, bring some extra gear. And definitely fill up your tank before you do any off-roading, um, because that was something you saw in the video I should have done. And bring lots of cameras, bring your friends, it's beautiful. Don't take so many pictures and videos that you forget to look at the scenery. Here we've climbed up part of the way, halfway um, on the side, uh, almost entering Canyonlands. The right of way is for people coming up the hill. So if you're going down, uh, you do need to pull to the side. And at some point, uh, it gets pretty narrow. But I will say for the Schaefer Trail, you could probably do this in an all-wheel drive to Sienna, uh, to be very frank with you. It's not very difficult. It's mostly just a dirt road. There are some sharp rocks on it, so definitely have good tires to be able to take the impact of those rocks. That was my main concern during the whole experience was getting a puncture, which we didn't, so that was great. How'd you close a ring? Who closed the ring? Me? I didn't close the ring. How did you close one? <laughs> <laughs> so, we're gonna fast forward a little bit on this because we got a lot of footage to go through, but truly, it's an amazing place. I highly recommend visiting Moab if you are in Utah on a trip. I often will take people from out of state, like from Florida and such, to Moab if they're only here for a weekend because you can you can make the trip in a day just like I did in this video. Uh, you just leave early enough in the morning, you'll get some things in on that day if you hike or you go off-road, um, and you'll be able to make it back uh, that same evening, even if you get back at midnight. So it's definitely a close getaway. Now you've probably seen you know videos of Amangiri, that amazing uh, resort hotel that's in Utah and all the celebrities stay at. That is not in Moab. That is actually close to Lake Powell. And so if you want to go there and pay four or five thousand dollars a night, which I wish I could, <laughs> it's um, it's quite far. So if you're going from let's say Salt Lake City, that will be probably a five or six hour drive. We made it to the top. Beautiful. Look at this view. We are right on the edge. <laughs> ah, it's, a, it's a little ways down. It's the White Rim Trail all the way. Very cool. Honestly, not that hard. Look, 
there. She's in there. Doesn't want to come out. So next, we drove real quick all the way to Arches, got in, and started hiking to Delicate Arch. And we did it right at sunset, so I wouldn't suggest that. We're going up to Delicate Arch even though it's uh, already sunset. Let's see if we make it before it gets dark. <laughs> Almost there. You can tell we've made it fast because the hair is all messed up. <laughs> oh, my teeth are so white. Made it. Beautiful. How fast did we do it? 30 months. Amazing. Amazing. Fast as I've ever done it. That's like the 10th time I've been here. <laughs> Oh, it's called Delicate Arch, by the way. Delicate Arch. Well, that's it. Good night. Catch you in the next one. Like, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the influencer thing. Right here.